and welcome to another Corel Aftershot Pro tutorial. Today should be a quick one. We're just going to be looking at Grad Filter Pro. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, I may have demonstrated Grad Filter Lite, which is the free version, and it works just like a regular Grad Filter would on the front of your camera. It darkens the edge, and then it sort of gets gradually lighter. And so you can make that be the top is darker, and or you can flip it over, and you know the bottom is darker. However you want to take your picture, you know, standing at a seascape, over a mountain, whatever. You can obviously do all that in software. I prefer doing that in software simply because it's what they would refer to as non-destructive. If you take a photo with a grad filter on there, there's really no way to undo it. So having the ability to just come into an image like this, you know, assuming you haven't blown out your highlights, which I'm super careful to do, uh, especially using Micro Four Thirds, I... Um, can always come in and darken the sky as I see fit. Now, standing out here this day, there's plenty of cloud texture, and I envision the idea of using a grad filter to bring more of that out. So a simple use, this is sort of the default basic use of a grad filter, is simply to throw it on there, make it as dark as you need it to be to get the detail you want. You know, if you want it to just a little bit, or if you want to go super moody, you can really go crazy with it and just crank it all the way over there and now suddenly you've got this really moody sky you'll notice that uh, it does kind of have a default where it's dark to light and then the center line is approximately middle of the screen you can use your offset to change that so that you're not darkening in your foreground if you don't want to you can also use the edge and I'm going to go a bit extreme here so you can see what the edge looks like I'll take this off so edge cranked over becomes just like a straight edge cranked to the left so the default is here and that that's sort of my go-to it works pretty well but also you can go a little bit lighter if you want to have a little bit different transition so a softer transition and then again playing with your offset and your strength can give you different effects this works really good for um, you know black and white images when you want to go uh, extra moody with it. You can bring this down a little bit, you know, and, and you could obviously continue working the image until you're happy with with all of it. This is just, I'm trying to give you a quick idea. Um, it does have the option to brighten as well, which is obviously the reverse. I've personally never used that, but I can see where you might if you had an area and needed to, um, the bottom part was too dark and you wanted to lighten it up. You know, say you did a seascape and you were making sure that your sky was correctly exposed and so the foreground was too dark. I could see putting a light um, filter on there to kind of lighten this up. That would make some sense to me. I just haven't personally done it because those kinds of scenes aren't, aren't what I typically shoot. Now the other thing that this can do, let me reset this guy back here, um, is also enables the over the light version, light being the free one, the Grad Filter Pro being um, the, the paid version. I believe it's on sale right now, so if you go to Corel's website, you might be able to get a discount on it. I think normal price is like 20 bucks. I think it's like 5 bucks right now. But let's um, let's go here. I'm going to make it kind of medium strength. I'm going to offset it a bit. Change it a bit. I'm not, like I said, I'm not doing too much. Just a little bit. And then you can do this, which would be to create a bit more mood using color. So if you wanted to pretend it was you know, golden hour kind of light. You can do that and tint the this the area here. I'll go a bit extreme so we can see see it a bit more. So you can see in this case, obviously, I, I went a bit crazy, but this is a really good way to create the idea that you've got some sunrise or sunset, a little bit of mood being brought in by. Um, the light in a very slick way without having to go and globally adjust the temperature. Now you could do an adjustment layer and then draw it out and then use your temperature on the adjustment layer and just make sure that you feather the edge. That works pretty well for a scene like this because you can make the feather be you know half half of the space and that does work pretty well but you can see that by using a grad filter it's just so much faster and then the fact that the pro version allows us to change color you know it means that we're not stuck to just the um, 
the options that were provided by the temperature, right? So it gives a little more flexibility if you're into trying uh, to tone your images in a way that, you know, give them more impact based on, you know, what you're after. Now, the fact that the Pro allows for multiple filters lets us do a little bit of this kind of stuff. So by default, it's still just the top. I'm going to crank this over here. You can also just type that in. And then let's say I'm going to do this one thusly. And then I can play with the, let me go center line here. I don't want to get up into that area. Keep it down like so. And again, I'm not going, not going real crazy with it. And then the edge, I'll just tweak it a little bit. And so now I've got, you know, the, the ability to add one tint in one area and another tint in another. And, and again, depending on what you're after, you might be able to use that to utilize the idea that you're at blue hour, it's a transitional period of time, you've got some yellow light coming in and you want to emphasize that, or the clouds are kind of cold up above, you're trying, trying to emphasize that. So that, that's kind of um, a, uh, a basic way to use the various grad filters and get a sense for those. Now let's take, take a look at one other option. Okay, so this might not seem to make uh, initially quite as much sense to use a grad filter on. This is a um, foggy morning scene, obviously trees in the mist, that kind of thing. And I mean, I could decide to use a grad filter here and warm it up a little bit, maybe have some color. That's a little annoying, but it works out okay. And sort of create, you know, this effect thusly, if I, if I really wanted to do that, and then have nice warming effect as if the whole scene was warmer, or if you decide that you wanted to be a bit colder. Now again, you can use temperature to do this as well, but that again would cover the whole scene, where here you can kind of play with the options of uh, just the upper portion or just the lower portion. And so that's, like I said, this is kind of a nice effect right here, okay? So to me, this opens up a lot of possibilities for how I might interpret a scene by just using this. But let me show you one other option here. Let me um, I'm gonna bring these back down to, come on, I'm, this one I'm going to turn back to yellow. But what I'm going to do now is rotate it and then play with the offset a bit. Let's rotate it a little less than that. There we go. And then like this. So what I'm going to do here, and again, this is a bit extreme for our, so we can see it on our tutorial here. You can kind of get an idea. Just, again, this is a demo. See how it's a bit yellow, in this case, yellow up here. Now that's sort of a way to, to sort of emphasize the idea that the light is maybe coming across. And I'm going to bring it down so we can see it. You know, so it's yellow to not yellow here. And so if you had a scene where you wanted to have a bit of sunrise light coming through the clouds in the upper left, but then down here was cooler, you could throw another one in throw it up to a blue of some kind. First thing I'm going to do is go 180, then I'll center line it and bring it back around. Oops, let's uh, go this way. Should have gone left instead of right. Uh, just say right there is fine. And then I can bring this down a little bit. And so you could have it go from yellow to a bluish tint you see me moving that offset, how I'm bringing it up the scene and then down the scene. So that's just some, just a quick demo to show you how you can use your Grad Filter Pro filters, multiple filters on one scene, which is handy, uh, to tint your image in specific areas. And in this case, you could have a crossover section in the middle. If, again, if sunlight was coming through a little bit, creating a bit of a yellow glow, you could emphasize that with a filter. And then you can make this cooler, more blue and cooler if you felt like that would bring out the mood that you wanted to, to get across in your image. So Grad Filter Pro, I'm, so far I've just been playing with it a little bit and uh, I liked it enough to uh, create this tutorial and show you what it looks like. You can also use this just in um, actual adjustment layers. So what I'm going to do here, let's, while we're together, I'm going to do this. 
And I'll just plop this right here so it's easy to see. Oh, interesting. So you can see what I've done here. I've created an adjustment layer, obviously just a circle here. And I'm going to really feather the bejeebles out of it here. So let me throw that up there. Change the color to this. Now suddenly I've created a sun. So, you know, I, I guess I could see where you might use something like that. If you want to emphasize just one area, bring the strength to something reasonable. You know, play with your edge to get it where you want it, etc. So using your grad filter in an adjustment layer has some possibilities as well. I'm not sure of an image that I can think of that I would use this in, but I bet it'll come up. I bet I could do something where I'm masking out an area and I just want to darken a little bit around some water or maybe the foreground I want to lighten it. I, I might use the brighten option to lighten an area. It would be useful. Anyway, hopefully this has been interesting or useful to you. Check it out, Grad Filter Pro. Now, I recommend being that I just did this and I was like stunned, you, while you can get your free stuff from your Get More, which I, I fully um, fully support, just grab all the free crap that you want. The ones that are paid, go directly to Corel's website and check their plugins out there because you might be able to find um, a better price, better discount. This plugin normally is 20 bucks. I think I got it for five bucks. That's a win. Anyway, uh, if you got any questions, let me know. And if there's other things you want to see, leave me a comment below. If not, that's all I got. Talk to you later.